Welcome back everyone. We're going to be doing another comparison today between the newly released Google Pixel 4a and the iPhone 10. Now you might be wondering, bro, why are you comparing these phones? These are like two totally different markets and all this. Actually, you might be surprised, not really. The iPhone 10 in the used market is selling for about that $400 price tag, but the Pixel 4a is actually selling for $350 brand new. Now just because this is technically a cheaper device that looks kind of better doesn't necessarily mean it is the better phone in every angle. And the same thing for the iPhone 10. There's pros and cons for both. One isn't necessarily like crazily way ahead of the other one, but there are some really cool pros for both phones and there's some cons as well. Now, if you want to pick up an iPhone 10, I'll find the cheapest one on Amazon. I'll link it down in the description below so you can pick it up from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the front, I'll go and start off with the iPhone 10 because it is that older phone. You have a 5.8 inch Super Retina OLED display and it's 1125 by 2436 and it's a really good panel. You know, when it came out in 2017, we all liked it, we all hyped it up and it's still exactly the same case. It's a very good phone, the panel is extremely, extremely good. You have Force Touch on it, which is still really awesome. You have True Tone on it too, which is really cool. Now, compared to a lot of other phones that just came out, there are some things that are missing with this specific panel. Things like, you know, a hole punch display, less of a notch, 120 hertz refresh rate and stuff like that. But the Pixel 4a doesn't have it either, so it's totally okay. It's not really that big of a deal. But the panel itself is still really good in my opinion. The angles are great. When it comes down to viewing angles, the picture quality is great. And like I said, the notch is really maybe the only problem, but I really don't care too much. I think I'm pretty much used to it. And when you even look at the newest iPhones like the 11 Pros and all those stuff, like you really still have the same exact design for the most part on the front. So I think this panel is really good for the most part. And even going with the Pixel 4a, I mean, the panel size is almost exactly the same too. You have a 5.81 inch panel on the Pixel 4a and it's 1080p, so a little bit lower resolution. The PPI is also lower here too. But for a $350 phone, just looking on the front, you may just think that the Pixel 4a is the more premium looking phone because it does have that hole punch display. And that is a very, very important thing to keep in mind. You know, displays and everything aren't really the most important things, but in this case, for as cheap of a phone this is, the Pixel 4a's panel is actually really good. The viewing angles also, like I stated before, are actually pretty good. One of the most important, I think, overlooked things when in terms of a budget phone is usually the panel. Usually they focus on like, you know, making the phone feel premium but they usually overlook the screen and the, I think Google did a pretty good job on this panel. The one thing to keep in mind though is that it's pretty reflective. So when I look at the iPhone 10 panel and I look at the Pixel 4a panel, I'm seeing way more reflection coming from the Pixel 4a than the iPhone 10. So kind of keep that in mind if you're like always in the sun and direct sunlight, you're gonna have kind of a hard time kind of viewing it, but viewing it for the most part, I think are really good too. So in terms of the front, what I'll definitely tell you, I think the iPhone 10 is definitely the better looking phone. I definitely do think that the iPhone 10 has a better looking display, but the Pixel 4a may be the better looking phone just because the lack of the notch and everything. I mean, it is what it is, but that's kind of one thing that I saw right there. And you can see size-wise, they kind of are almost the same size. The Pixel 4a is just a little bit longer, but when I'm feeling both in the hand, like I stated before, one really doesn't feel way crazier or, you know, bigger than the other one. There are some other important things to keep in mind, though, which I'll get into right now. Thickness-wise, you can kind of see that the iPhone 10 I think, is a little bit thinner than the Pixel 4a. As you can see, it's a little bit hard to tell, but from what I've seen, you know, the iPhone 10 I think, is a little bit thinner. Also, you can see the volume buttons are not on the left side, on the Pixel 4a, they're on the right side. And also, notice how much premium, the f how much more premium the iPhone 10 is over the Pixel 4a. You have plastic pretty much everywhere on the Pixel 4a, including the size. The iPhone 10 has that aluminum siding, which is really cool. And on the back, you can see single camera setup on the Pixel 4a with the fingerprint sensor right here. The iPhone 10 has that glass back, which still feels extremely premium, and that dual camera setup. And definitely when it comes down to it, like I've stated a billion times, you're definitely going to be getting, I think, a better feeling phone and just a more premium feeling device from an iPhone 10 than a Pixel 4a. Another thing to keep in mind, the Pixel 4a does have a headphone jack up there. So if that's something that's very important to you, you do have that capability still on the Pixel 4a. So in terms of that, I think that really pretty much covers up the outside for the most part. I mean, there's a couple other things, you know, the iPhone 10 does have IP certification, which is really cool. The Pixel 4a does not have any IP certification at all. So if you get some water on it, chances are you'll probably be okay, but I wouldn't test it. I would not go and, you know, try to dip this thing in water and take it showers with me and stuff. I would stay away from water from the Pixel 4a where the iPhone 10 is technically certified to be, you know, somewhat water resistant, which is really cool. So 
in terms of the outside that really pretty much covers it up now hitting on the software this is also extremely extremely important so realistically because the pixel 4 is that newer device you might assume that it's going to be lasting longer and all that stuff but i think these two will probably end up lasting somewhat around the same in terms of software updates meaning if you get the pixel 4 and if you get the iphone 10 you might just find yourself getting pretty much the same years of software experience on both now when it comes down to the actual software itself, you're going to have to ask yourself, do you like Android more, do you like iOS more? Me personally, I'm pretty much split in the middle, but I use an iPhone every day, so kind of keep that in mind. But if you don't, or if you want to use a Pixel 4a, whatever, I truly believe between these two, the software cycle will probably end up being more of the same than not. They'll probably get another like three years of software support, I think, in my opinion. I could be totally wrong, who knows, but that's kind of what I'm estimating. I've been wrong before, I've been right before, but that's kind of what I'm saying, so... You will probably have custom ROM support eventually on the Pixel 4a, which would be really cool. So whenever that happens, I guess, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But that really pretty much covers it up in terms of the software experience as well. Now we'll go ahead and hit on the performance and I'll do a little bit of speed test as well. The Pixel 4a has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G chipset, an Adreno 618 GPU, and 6 gigs of RAM on all the models. There's only one model of it. Where the iPhone 10 has the Apple A11 Bionic chip, hex-core CPU, and 3 gigs of RAM on two models. So... So let's go and see which one is the fast one between these two. Okay, now that we're back, let's go and make sure all the apps are cleared out in the background. As you can see, I have to swipe it out of the iPhone with the Pixel 4a. Now I have these third-party apps downloaded right here, so I can go and just get into these. Let's do Facebook, 3, 2, 1. And I think the iPhone 10 was actually faster there. That was kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting that. Twitter, 3, 2, 1. And they both were kind of tied. I don't know if one was faster than the other one. They both look kind of the same. Snake versus Blocks, 3, 2, 1. And the Pixel 4 was actually faster there, followed by the iPhone 10 shortly after. Let's get into some gameplay, see if there's a difference. And there may be, I think they're kind of the same. I think the iPhone 10 was kind of stuttering in the beginning with. They both look kind of the same towards the end of it. Netflix, 3, 2, 1. And the Pixel 4a was faster, followed by the iPhone 10 a little bit after. Quizlet, 3, 2, 1. Pixel 4a faster, iPhone 10 a little bit behind. Let's do Temple Run, the original one, 3, 2, 1. And we were in a game here, but we were also in a game here, and it did look like that the iPhone 10 was the faster one to get into this specific game. Now let's go ahead and click Resume and see if there's any big differences in terms of the gameplay. Which I doubt there is because it's a very basic game for the most part. And as you can see, yeah, there's not that big of a difference. Let's go and do Temple Run 2. 3, 2, 1. And it's looking like it's about to be a tie between both. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's kind of what it's looking like. Actually, the Pixel 4a was a little, just a little bit ahead of the iPhone 10. That was pretty impressive I think for the Pixel 4a. I was expecting the iPhone 10 to win in the beginning with, but you know, it looks like actually the iPhone 10 was a little bit slower there, which was really surprising. Let's do Bofa, 3, 2, 1. Pixel 4a faster, and the iPhone 10 eventually comes up a little bit behind, but still extremely fine. Let's go and end it off with Real Racing 3, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so a little glitchiness going on in the Pixel 4a, still okay. And we did have a little bit of a pop-up and some glitchiness going on with the iPhone 10. For some reason, the Pixel 4a does a really good job at this specific game. So you might see, as you can see, we're already loaded into it. The iPhone 10 will definitely take its time, which is okay. I'll probably just fast forward until this one is done. And for some reason, it looks like the iPhone 10 is frozen or it's stuck here. Never mind. Okay, yeah, I don't know why that happened. That was very annoying. But pretty much what I've seen so far is that sometimes the iPhone 10 was faster, but I think most of the time the Pixel 4a was probably the faster one between these two, which is really surprising. So I kind of want to say performance-wise, the Pixel 4a is just a little bit faster more times than not. But the iPhone 10, if the Pixel 4a beat it, the iPhone 10 was literally right behind it in some cases. So kind of keep that in mind. But I don't think one really blows the other one out of the water by any means. So let's go ahead and hit on the cameras. Like I mentioned earlier, a dual camera setup on the iPhone 10 and a single camera setup on the Pixel 4a. And you are getting a 12.2 megapixel sensor, single sensor on the Pixel 4a, but two 12 megapixel sensors on the iPhone 10, a 12 megapixel widening and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. And so far what I've been seeing is I think the Pixel 4a probably takes a better quality photo so far, but I think the iPhone 10's camera with the addition of that extra sensor makes it a better camera sensor overall. 
you have the ability of shooting 4K videos at 60 frames per second, which is really cool. So again, not a crazy, you know, big difference, but it would have been really nice if the Pixel 4 a could have supported 4K at 60. So I think the iPhone 10 ones in the back camera. On the front camera, almost the same sensor, 7 megapixel sensor on the iPhone 10, 8 megapixel sensor on the Pixel 4a, and even here, I'd probably say the iPhone 10. Just the lens looks so much better in my opinion, but the Pixel 4a's lens is right there. It's not really that big of a difference, if I'm being honest. I think I'm over-exaggerating a little bit. Now, ending it off with the battery life, you're getting a 2,716 milliampere battery on the iPhone 10, but on the Pixel 4a, you're getting a 3,140 milliampere battery, so a little bit of a difference right there. I still think you're probably getting the better battery life on the Pixel 4a, but you are getting wireless charging on the iPhone 10, which a lot of phones have. I don't know why the Pixel 4a doesn't have it, but that's also another big thing to keep in mind. So, in terms of both phones and everything, what I can tell you is, is that I think the Pixel 4a is a tremendous priced budget phone in my opinion. For $350, you're getting a very, very good, capable phone for the most part. But I still think, I mean, if it was between these two, I think I would still pick up an iPhone 10, just because it feels so premium, it has a lot going for it, the software experience is great for me, the performance is still pretty good for me, the cameras are great, it has wireless charging and things like that, but the Pixel 4a is still a very good phone too. I don't think one really blows the other one, like I said, out of the water, but I think maybe if I had to go for it, I think I would pick up a used iPhone 10 over a brand new Pixel 4a, but I still think the 4a is a tremendous phone, and I think if like the iPhone 10 was a 10 out of 10, the Pixel 4a is like a 9 out of 10, or even a 10 out of 10. Like, these two kind of fill different needs in my opinion. So, that's really pretty much it. Hopefully that made sense. If you guys have any questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button on me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So, it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.